In episode 142 of the Guitar Music Theory podcast, I talk about the use of mixility and mode in music by Huey Lewis and the News. Greetings, guitar engineers. Welcome to the Guitar Music Theory Podcast. I am your host, Desi Serna. And today we're going to talk about scale modes, specifically Mixolydian mode, and specifically its use in music by Huey Lewis and the News. So I picked up a gig recently, and I'm having to learn a whole show to perform with a band called The Heart of Rock and Roll. They are America's number one tribute to Huey Lewis and the News. Be playing at the City Winery in Nashville on Friday, July 14th, 2023. So if you're listening to this podcast before that and you're going to be in the area, you can look that up and get some tickets if they're still available. Anyway, as I was preparing for the show and um, learning the songs, I realized, wow, these guys make a lot of use of Mixolydian mode. So we're going to talk about that today. I'm going to take a look at uh, three songs. We're going to take a look at the song, I Need a New Drug. Um, back in time and if this is it they all use mixolydian mode um, there's something different about its application in each song um, it's going to be pretty cool i'm pretty excited about it i did post a video to uh, youtube and facebook as well so you could go to either one of those platforms and just search desi cerna huey lewis and you should uh, it should come up or you can just go to google Search Desi Cerna Huey Lewis or Desi Cerna Huey Lewis Mixolydian Mode and you'll see the blog post on my website. I've got my video embedded there but I also have some tablatures and some uh, video tabs and other stuff and it's kind of a complete little lesson right there. So if you want to take advantage of that, it's free. You can go check that out. But in the meantime, we're going to talk about it here in podcast episode 142 and it's going to be a great discussion. But as always, before we get started, let me direct all of my listeners to my website, guitarmusictheory.com. Answer the question, I ask you about your playing, and I'll send you free custom video instruction that is calibrated to your current level. Whether you're a beginner still needing to learn the basics, or you need help with bar chords, guitar soloing, finger picking, or you want to delve deeply into music theory, I have a free video course for you. I can, I can put you on a plan to help fill gaps in your knowledge and fill gaps in your playing so you can make progress, move forward, and reach your music goals. So enroll in your free video course now at guitarmusictheory.com. You can click on the link in the podcast show notes. All right, so we are ready to dive in. We are going to start with the song, I Want a New Drug. So let me give you a little sample of what it sounds like. I'm playing along with a little MIDI file that's generated in Guitar Pro, and I included this performance in my video version of this lesson. And if you go to my blog post uh, at guitarmusictheory.com, you'll see that I also have some videos of just the tab if you wanted to just watch the tab player and learn these parts. All right, so let's get started. Here is what I Want a New Drug sounds like. All right, so let's talk about this. Um, that was actually me playing the clip uh, from my video. In the video, I'm playing my red um, Gibson Epiphone Dot, like uh, 335 style semi-hollow guitar. Um, but um, today I picked up my PRS McCarty 594. That's what I'm playing here. <laughs> As always, I'm playing through my Kemper profiling amplifier. This is a profile of a 1968 Marshall Super Lead at max gain here. And then let me take off some of the effects. Uh, what do I have on here? Here it is dry. Then I'm adding like a slapback delay, which gives it a slight some slight ambiance, kind of amp in the room sort of sound, and then I'm adding some chorus. 
And I actually took the reverb off just because with the reverb on, I felt like it kind of muddied things up a little too much with that chorus. So anyway, that's my sound here. And here's that part. So let's talk about it. Um, this is actually based on the chord changes A, G, and D. And that would be a 1, flat 7, 4 chord progression. And it's A, G, and D. Um, and this is Mixolydian mode because you're actually using chords out of the D major scale but you're centering on its fifth degree A. So A, G, and D are chords five, four, and one in the D scale. And if you think about it that way, um, I would understand why you would. I think of it that way. Um, at least that's one of the ways I think of it. That's what I would initially teach you. That's how I would init initially teach you to think about it in like fretboard theory or guitar theory for dummies when I introduce modes. We take a look at major scales and I show you how you can have chord progressions that focus on something other than chord one. And then later uh, in those uh, books, I explained, well, while you could think of this as being five, four, one, five out of the D scale, it's more correct to number the A as one since it is your tonic pitch. That's where everything starts and that's where everything comes back to for resolution. That's your tonic pitch. That, that's what, what your key is. You generally say this is in a key, key of A major, meaning that an A major chord is the, the primary chord in the music. So if you remember things, then A to G is no longer five to, to four. It's actually uh, one to a flat seven. And then A to D is no longer 5 to 1. It's actually 1 to 4. So 1, flat 7, 4, 1. 1, flat 7, 4. 1, flat 7, 4. And those chords are 1, flat 7, 4, regardless of where you play. If you use power chords or bar chords or open chords. And actually, the riff is based on mainly just power chords. So here's A, A power chord, and then that's just the open strings three and four. That's a G and a D. That's just a inverted G5 power chord. And then A, and I'm fretting a, excuse me, D, and I'm fretting an A there. That's just a D power chord. So just playing power chords here. And that's one flat seven four. And that's Mixolydian mode. And you're gonna hear Mixolydian mode, which would be the D major scale, but centering on its fifth degree A. Um, you're gonna hear that throughout the music with in the rest of the instrumentation. And there are some fills that you hear in between those chords in that main riff. So let's talk about that. Um, I'm playing here in the open position with my index finger kind of barring and holding that A power chord. I just lift my fingers for the open strings for G. And then I got D right under, under my fingers in the same position. And also in the same position, I can play A major pentatonic. Or the A major blues scale, which is when I would add in the minor third C. It's kind of a chromatic passing tone. That goes perfectly with an A chord. It sounds really good in Mixolydian mode here as well. And so you're hearing those notes used for the little fills that come in between those chord changes. Like right there. Right out of that A major blues scale. Or So 
So later in the song, there's some guitar solo sections, and you're playing over those same changes that the riff is based on. And you're going to notice that the guitar will use A major pentatonic with that C in there. There's some of that major stuff um, happening in there. Whatever, it's different combinations. Um, you'll also hear, you may also hear, I have to go back and analyze the recording, but um, you may just hear straight up Mixolydian mode too. So. You can do that as well, straight Mixolydian mode scale. Um, and then you'll also hear A minor pentatonic. Why does that work? Well, let's think about it, because if, you, if you're in A Mixolydian mode, you've got an A chord with a flat seven. And when you play the minor pentatonic, you've got A, uh, C, D, E, G, that's a root, minor third, fourth, fifth, flat seventh. Okay, well, in A Mixolydian mode, you've got the root that's part of that A minor pentatonic. You've got the fourth and fifth, D and E, and you have the flat seven, G. The only note you don't have is the minor third, C, but we're already making use of the minor third, C. We put it in the A major blues scale. So why not just go full minor pentatonic? So yeah, you can absolutely use the minor pentatonic. And it, it fits in there. Um, this is a, a very uh, common combination of things and it's got that mixolydian, blues, rock, major, minor uh, sort of sound. So that's what's happening here in the song, I Want a New Drug. So now I wanna move on to another example. Let's take a listen to what's happening in the song Back in Time. All right, so that's the song Back in Time. I'm gonna to switch to a clean sound here. This song is in D mixolydian mode. So think about a D major chord, wherever you might play it. And D mixolydian mode means that D is your tonic pitch, but it's actually the fifth degree of the major scale. So D mixolydian mode is actually the G major scale, but you're centering on its fifth degree, D. So if I play uh, the notes of the G major scale starting on D. I get what's called the D mixolydian mode. Almost sounds like a major scale except for at the end there. Do, re, mi, fa, so, do. Got a flat seven at the end instead of a major seven at the end. If I play a major seven at the end, that's just a D major scale, D Ionian mode, which is the plain major scale. We often don't use Ionian, we just say D major. But we're not in D major. We are, well, we're in a type of D major, because Mixolydian mode is a type of, of major scale, but it's not the major scale, it's the Mixolydian mode scale. Or it's also called the dominant scale, because there's different names for different degrees of the major scale. For example, the first degree is called the tonic. There's G. The fifth degree is called the dominant. That's D. So if you play the mixolydian mode, you can call it the D dominant scale. Because it's got a flat seven, but it's got a major third. And when you play a root, root, third, fifth, and flat seven, it makes what's called a D dominant seventh. That's where that comes from. So back in time, this solo section here, the, um, this whole melodic lead line is in D 
Mixolydian mode. I'm going to go to a higher gain setting here. This is a profile of a Marshall. Is this also a super lead? What was I on? That was a 1968 super lead from Top Jimmy. This is actually a different super lead, a higher gain Marshall super lead. And this, this is from Tone Junkie. And here's my sound for this. Some reverb and delay. And this lead line, here it is unaccompanied, sounds like this. And that's the root D, right there. There's your flat seven. Flat seven, one. Then it goes on. There's your tonic pitch. There's that flat seven again. So it's, you know, practically the major scale until you get to that flat seven C natural. Just a great example of using um, the scale here and some great melodic ideas. You know, I almost wonder if I don't want to take away anything from guitarist Chris Hayes who I believe did most of the lead guitar work for Huey Lewis and the News, and I think is fantastic, and he also wrote a lot of the music for their songs. Um, but sometimes, sometimes his lead lines are so good, and they're so unlike what you would ex expect from a rock guitar player. I wonder if he got help from Johnny Cola, the sax player, who was also a guitar player in the band, with crafting some of these great lead lines. Then again, Chris Hayes talks about how he listened to a lot of jazz and so his background was in jazz and he brought that into the Huey Lewis and the News um, music. So um, in this next song we're going to talk about is This Is It. I just love that lead line and it just it's so melodic and the way it moves it's almost like a sax player wrote it. But maybe Chris Hayes didn't get any input. But I know that Johnny Cola, the sax player, also was one of their composers and contributed greatly to their music. Anyway, so this is just a perfect little example of seeing exactly how you would play in a major scale, in this case G major scale patterns, but you're centering on its fifth degree, so instead of you're centering on its fifth degree D. There it is. So. kind of interesting to think about the chord changes too um, underneath this if I uh, if I take a look here let me pull it up here on my end the actual chord changes that are happening underneath here are um, that's D major to C major to G slash B, to F slash A, to A minor 7, back to D. This is all straight out of the G scale and would be a G, um, excuse me, a D mixolydian mode progression except for that F. Let's get that F, F for, ex for a second though and think about the G major scale. Think about the harmonized scale and its chords, G, A minor, B minor, C, D. Start on D and go backwards, D, C, instead of B minor, G slash B, A minor, or A minor 7. So that's straight out of the scale there. Except for they sneak a quick F in there. Did you catch that? So F has an F natural in it, as opposed to the F sharp, 
that would be part of the G major scale and also the D mixolydian mode. That F sharp is critical. It's the it's the major third in the D chord, which is our tonic chord here. So it kind of functions as just a little chromatic half step movement there, you know. It's like. Um, it's, mm, I don't know, my brain is also thinking about how I'm in D mixolydian mode and I have the flat seven, or this is out of the G scale, but F is the flat seven of G, so it's almost like, it's almost like they're quickly borrowing a little bit of G mixolydian mode and throwing it in there. And then, I don't know, maybe I overcomplicated things, but it sounds cool. It goes by quickly. It's just that little movement, um, you know, uh, F natural to E, but that's the progression there. The guitar player doesn't make any attempt to try to follow that F chord change or slip in an F natural at any point. The lead line just stays completely straight in the D mixolydian mode. Just stay in it. So here it is one more time, and then we're going to move on to the next song. So one, two, three, four. <laughs> And it, it ends up going on. Um, I just uh, notated and demonstrated that much in the solo. Um, but uh, the solo section does go on, and I kind of learned a little bit of the recording, and then I just kind of improvised and ended it my own way from there, you know? That's how I play it. It's based loosely on what I heard um, in the recording, and that still was all uh, mixolydian mode there. And now we're going to move on to my third and final example. Here is part of the song, This Is It. All right, so um, that was the video. Of course, I got the video on YouTube and Facebook, and then I've got a blog post with that video on it, and I have some uh, um, some text there, and you can see some images and view the tab, and I also have some separate videos where you can just view a tab player if you want to learn uh, these parts. So let's take a look at this. So this is in the key of G major. Let's go to a clean sound here. And this is using a composition technique called modal mixture or modal interchange. So this is going back and forth between the plain G major scale and its chords. And then the G mixolydian mode, which would actually be using notes and chords out of the C major scale, but centering on its fifth degree G and using those chords, which are going to be different. Uh, let's see. That's G mixolydian mode there. So basically, you're going back and forth between using an F natural, which would be the major seven in the G scale, and an, excuse me, you're going back and forth between using an F sharp which would be the major seven in the G scale, and an F natural, which would be the flat seven. So you're still in G, generally speaking, the whole time, so you're going back and forth between plain G major and G mixolydian mode, or the G dominant scale, and that's called modal mixture or modal interchange, where you have the tonic, uh, the main tonic doesn't change, but the type of scale that you're 
you know, that you're using changes. So it's like you're using parallel scales. So G major and G mixolydian both start on G, but they're two different scales that actually have two different key signatures technically. One's G major, one's C major, but they're parallel scales. And so we're going back and forth uh, between them. And so if you consider the chord changes here to the song, it's G, B minor 7, and then this is happening musically. Again, that's G, then you go to its 3 chord, B minor 7, then you go to D, but it's played as a D minor 7, it's not played as major. And normally D major has F sharp in it, but this is D minor. It's got the F natural, and the lead line hits that every time to, to, to tie into that chord change. You got to stay away from the F sharp for sure, or that's going to sound really bad. Um, and so the lead line hits that F natural. It's a, it's a big part of that melody. I'll get to that in a second, that D minor chord. From here, it goes to E7. And that's not, this would actually be part of like A harmonic minor. So it's, it's using a little bit of harmonic minor here temporarily. That E7 pushes into A minor. And then from that A minor, which is the two chord in the key of G, you're walking up A minor, G slash B, C, D. So that's two, one over three, four, five and you're finished with the G, D major with that F sharp in there. So you got D minor and G major. Really cool chord changes here. So you can see how there's elements here of kind of jazz and stuff. We've got harmonic minor and some modal interchange happening here. Not your typical three chord rock. Um, and it's reflected in the lead line as well. So that lead line, I'm going to go back to that super lead, the tone junkie super lead, that gainier, biteier one for the lead line here. That's G major. And right here, I've got F sharp and D, because that ties into the B minor chord. So, those notes are right out of a B minor seven chord. But then the next part of the lead line, right there is a, that's an F natural because it goes to that D minor there. F natural is the flat seven. So G major, major seven F sharp, then flat seven F natural. Most of the notes of G major and G mixolydian are exactly the same. It's just the F that changes. It's either F sharp or F natural. So after that, back to the scale, major scale. Here comes that D minor chord change again. So again, you're, the lead line is going to emphasize F natural. Here it is. There it is. Then it just ends with G major stuff at the end there. There's a little chromatic step there with a D to D sharp to E. And if you play this on the fretboard, you realize why that's in there. This is just G major pentatonic. And when you have those notes that are a whole step apart, you could just throw a note in between there as a little chromatic thing. Um, at the very beginning, you hear a D in its fifth A, the five chord D in the key of G. And then it goes. 
up to G. So it's like five, one. So it's like one, two, three. Isn't that beautiful and amazing? And hopefully you never listen to that song the same way again. As soon as you hear that, you're like, oh, that's the flat seven. It's the flat seven in the G scale, or it's the minor third in the D minor chord. Because there's a D minor seven that's played there. Major seven, flat seven. Flat seven. A little chromatic. And that is the song, If This Is It, by Huey Lewis and the News. So to recap, and I'm on my own website here. My blog post is called Mixolydian Mode in Huey Lewis and the News. And I say, Huey Lewis and the News is a popular American rock band known for their catchy hits from the 1980s. They incorporate various musical elements in their music, including elements of jazz, blues, rock, and pop. The modal scale Mixolydian Mode is featured in many of their signature songs, including I Want a New Drug, Back in Time, and If This Is It. I go on to explain just a little bit of what Mixolydian Mode is, and I've got a video where I walk you through these songs and demonstrate it, and I have the tab and the notation is right in the video. But then you can scroll down in this blog post, and I actually have images of the tab for each um, song excerpt, and I have a little video player of the tab so you can see it and kind of hear it in action if you'd like to work out um, some of these parts. And I'm very excited because I get to play all these parts along with the rest of the songs, along with a whole uh, show worth of Huey Lewis and the, uh, in the news songs. On Friday, July 14th, 2023, at the City Winery in Nashville, Tennessee. So if you live in the area or you're going to be in the area or you're looking for something exciting to do and you want to travel to the area, uh, you, there still may be tickets available. Just go to Google and uh, just search um, Huey Lewis City Winery, Nashville, July 14th, and see if tickets are still available. All right, podcast number 142 is a wrap. If you have any questions or comments, you can go to my website, scroll down, and you'll see a contact link, and you can submit your comment or question there. Maybe you have ideas of things you'd like me, for me to discuss in future podcast episodes. Let me know. And if you have not yet signed up for a free video course, while you're on the website, just answer the question I ask you about your playing. And I will give you some options, and I will direct you to a course that's calibrated to your current level. I'll help you, whether you're a beginner needing to learn the basics, or you need help with bar chords, playing lead guitar, finger picking, or you want to learn more about music theory. So I've got a free video course for you. I can get you on a little plan there so you can start filling gaps in your knowledge, filling gaps in your playing, so you can move forward, become a better guitar player, have more fun on your instrument, and reach your music goals. So make sure you are enrolled in your free video course. Don't forget that you can find my books such as Fretboard Theory, Guitar Theory for Dummies, Guitar Rhythm and Technique for Dummies, Guitar Picking Mechanics, and more at Amazon.com and also in some select bookstores. If you love these podcast episodes that I produce and you want to financially support it so I can keep giving you this free content, go buy a book, go buy some of my paid video courses, or you can also click on the donate button on my website and you can uh, make a donation that way to support what I'm doing here. 
If you need help with something but you don't see anything on my website that uh, specifically relates to it, shoot me an email. Let's talk about it. Uh, we could possibly connect and do a lesson over Zoom as well. And uh, we can work on things if you need help with maybe <clears throat> learning a particular song or you got questions about some of your own technique and you just want to play for me and have me evaluate your playing or you're trying to get things together because you just joined a garage band or you got a cover gig coming up or whatever the case may be, shoot me an email, let's talk about it, and then if I think that um, I can help you out, I'll give you a link. Well, you can find the link on my website for private lessons and we can connect um, online using Zoom. All right, I think I've said enough. So thanks for listening. I'm Desi Serna. Before you go, be sure to subscribe to this podcast. Give it a five-star rating. Leave a comment if you can. Then keep playing and stay tuned for more.